Welcome to the NTN Nightly, I'm Nisha Charles. This edition stops stories. A third installment of the Roots and Soul Festival thrills audiences with St. Lucian talent spotlighted. Carafesta 14 proves a successful avenue for St. Lucia's best. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. St. Lucia's Prime Minister and Chairman of the Caribbean Community, Honorable Alan Chastney, has been lauded for the proactive stance of the government of St. Lucia as Tropical Storm Dorian threatened. The Chief Executive Officer and Director General of the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, Frank Comito, in a statement, commended regional governments and the tourism industry for their level of preparedness and their timely informing of residents and visitors of the potential threats posed by the tropical storm. He applauded Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney, as well as Barbados's Prime Minister Honorable Mia Motley, for their common sense approach, effective communications, emergency management, and their continuing investment in infrastructure and upgrades to hotel properties. The CHTA CEO noted that airports, which were closed as required when sustained winds reached 40 knots, have reopened at full capacity. As Dorian moves across the region, Comito encouraged other countries and territories to remain vigilant. The third installment of the Roots and Soul Festival thrilled as it culminated Sunday, 25th August at the Pigeon Island Landmark. The curtains came down on the St. Lucia Roots and Soul Festival on Sunday as patrons poured in the world over to soak in the final acts. The festival culminated on a high note with St. Lucian Canadian balladeer Zamani, St. Lucian showing Dukes Bryce, the R&B artist Genuine, Grammy winning award artist Maya and the showstopper UV40 featuring Ali Campbell and Astro. Events company of St. Lucia Inc.'s public relations officer Miniva Ross deemed the event a success. According to Ross, a new marketing strategy was employed this time around, where immense focus was placed on reaching out to the local and regional markets. She noted that other marketing strategies, championed by the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, contributed significantly to the large turnout. We have to give credit to the St. Lucia Tourism Authority again, um, their mandate being to push and publicize the events, the festival in the re within the region and internationally. So they would have um, brokered this special arrangement with Liat. And as a result, we definitely saw um, a lot of persons coming out from the neighboring islands to for the Roots and Soul Festival. And um, that only helps us, it brings our numbers up. Um, of the, the integration, I mean, we've always driven, you know, the, the, the integration of our, of our very close neighbors with us, with ourselves. So that all lends itself to building our numbers and, and it's working, that worked in our favor as well. Each artist graced the stage, giving nothing short of stellar performances, matching the intoxicating energy from the crowd. Artist Genuine explained how he kept the momentum going. It's just the love for it, because here, it was really hot, so so when I went up there, I still said, okay, you got to pace yourself. Because you talk to yourself while you're on the stage. If you are a performer or whatever, you talk to yourself, and, and, and you kind of get to gauge it while you're up there. So I was like, okay, don't be going crazy and jumping up and doing all kinds of flips and stuff, because it's, it's hot. It's hot, and so I don't want to be falling out. I want to give y'all a great performance, and I thank y'all for supporting me for the 23 years that I've been out and uh, everybody sounded great so I, I definitely appreciate it. Meanwhile, St. Lucian Canadian balladeer Zamani made it a family affair including her sister and cousin in her performance. She indicated that having them there to support her was very important. It was so important because in those moments on stage when you feel um, uneasy or nervous, I can just look to them and we're there together, so I don't feel alone. I feel like, you know, we got this. We can hold it down for a couple more minutes. We can keep going, so. The St. Lucia Roots and Soul Festival culminated at Pigeon Island on Sunday, 25th August. For the Government Information Service, I am Janal Norville. Meantime, the Roots and Soul Festival provided an invaluable platform for the showcasing of St. Lucia's artists. Anissa Antoine zooms in on one of the national acts featured on the second night of the festival. 
St. Lucian Band skip Monday made their debut main stage on Saturday at the St. Lucia Roots and Soul Festival. The summer festival is a combination of local and visiting musicians in the genres of reggae, hip-hop, R&B and Afro-punk. Christopher De Freitas of Skip Monday expressed gratitude to the organizers for the increased opportunities provided to the local musicians. To promote the local musicians in St. Lucia, I mean, there are a lot of good musicians in St. Lucia also. And, um, and this is where you can showcase them in these types of events, like the Houston Soul Festival. So the more events we have like this and pushing local artists is where they will get themselves exposed mostly, public and also the international market. Skip Monday has been in existence for approximately 20 years. Defreitas explained that preparations for their Roots and Soul performance differed from their usual set. Because it was a Roots and Soul festival, we kind of gave it a different twist. Our set is usually like an alternative type music. We do a lot of um, alternative rock. But we also, from our old type of music we used to play many years ago, it was more of a rock reggae type of vibe. But right now, we, for this show, we did it, we kind of did a, a twist it, bringing in a little bit of the reggae and roots type music into it. This is the third installment of the St. Lucia Roots and Soul Festival. Other featured acts for Saturday night included Nigerian artist Timaya, British artist Lou John, and a reggae legend Taurus Riley featuring Estelle. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Carafesta 14 has been hailed a success. The curtains came down on the Caribbean Arts Festival in Trinidad and Tobago on Sunday, 25th August. St. Lucian Arts and Crafts at Carafesta 14 generated interest and sales opportunities. As we hear in this report, there was a wide range of St. Lucian creativity at the Carafesta Showcase. The St. Lucian Arts and Craft Expo at Carifesta 14 in Trinidad and Tobago has been making an impact on regional visitors from day one. Raphael Descartes is representing Membet. So far it's been very good. My, I was setting up and my first customer came. She bought the, the first bag, I took pictures and all. Interest has been high for Lisa Barton Volney of the zip code and the clothesline. Oh, well, it has been great because our items are different. Nobody expected to see jewelry out of zippers. Yes, so the, the response from persons has been great. It's very encouraging. For Terrell Nicholas, the strategy was to use national flags to appeal to a diverse Caribbean audience. The islands participating in Carifesta, I did spoon necklaces with their flags in there. So that has been a big hit. I mean, I made quite a few sales for the morning just for the fact that the, the flag was in the spoon, you know, one man bought six of them. Jennifer St. Louis of Poetry Kisses showcased products made from material that is uniquely St. Lucian. We use a lot of local products. We use shells and stones, um, uh, seeds, our local seeds as well, and a lot of natural materials, especially like hemp cord for people with sensitive skin. And so we're always mindful of these things, but I try my best to capture the essence of the island and of the Caribbean around. Shirley Ann Edward of Shirley's Creations, a veteran of regional exhibitions, displayed her uniquely created St. Lucian themed Christmas decorations. But I can use something very, very new, which has uh, the balls and cinnamon and local products, which is St. Lucia Creole Christmas. The focus on St. Lucian online entrepreneur Darian Louis was to bring Caribbean creativity onto one single online platform through Shop the Caribbean. Carifesta provided the perfect setting. And here to showcase our wonderful products from across the region, especially my home island of St. Lucia, from craft to sulfur soaps to virgin coconut oil. Because at Shop the Caribbean, we believe that we have some really amazing products across the Caribbean region, but there needs to be a platform whereby collective shopping can be done, consolidation can be done. Darian notes that one of the items on sale for Shop the Caribbean has been driven by visitors to the island. And one of our best products and best movers on the site is the sulfur mud soap, which depicts the sulfur mud from the volcano, which visitors sought after they come to St. Lucia for. But when they return home, they want that mud feeling and that exfoliating feeling they cannot get. So we've translated this into a mud soap, and it has been one of our best movers online since then. The St. Lucian artists at Carifesta are hoping that with days left, there will be a greater interest and more demand for authentic St. Lucian creativity. They are also learning 
that there is real competition out there. From the Government Information Service, I am Rojvaro Lawrence reporting from Carifesta 14 in Trinidad and Tobago. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. With just one click, the internet connects people, businesses, and nations. Being connected can open a world of information and opportunities. You can get services and products of your choice much faster, from electronic financial transactions to connecting with family and friends, from being up to date with the latest news and information to learning new skills and acquiring academic qualifications, all from the convenience of your home or wherever you roam. Get connected today. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Ectel, the NTRC, and this station. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome everyone to your update from youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The school's boxing program initiative of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports has been paying dividends as it helps provide a nursery of young boxers to compete at regional and international levels. Two young boxers from the program returned home recently, having successfully competed at the Caribbean Schoolboys Championship in Guyana. The two boxers helped St. Lucia finish in third position out of nine competing countries at the event. Gilchrist Meda of the Seventh-day Adventist Academy won a gold medal during the championship and he says the local program has been very good for him and has earned him some admiration among his peers. Everybody, my family, my friends, my teachers, even the principal, again, everything, you know. Okay, what about the, the future plans? Tell us about um, what do you plan for boxing and how, how did you prepare for the competition? I prepared, I wake up 5 foot every morning to run. Unit day, I skip my rope. I shadow box, unit day. Then I come 4 o'clock here, eh? train hard, very hard. Uh, it's very difficult. Meanwhile, boxing coach in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Conrad Fredericks, says the level of competition at the tournament continues to grow year after year. I didn't expect to get third because, you know, we take two boxers and to forget two boxers and get two boxers to get third with two boxers. You know, it was very, it was very hard for us because it was a very hard tournament because the only country get gold was Guyana itself. They had the gold. Trinidad get two, St. Lucia get one, and no other country get none. No other gold. Get silver and bronze. Only three countries get gold. Guyana. Trinidad and St. Lucia are the only country that get gold. Fredericks expects even tougher competition next year with the entry of boxers from nations like Mexico, the United States, Haiti and Venezuela. Before we leave, we let you know that the contingent from the Boys Training Center returned home Sunday following their participation in the Caribbean Children Charity Shield football tournament played in Grenada. The St. Lucians competed in the under-17 category and went out following their semi-final encounter Friday against a team from Trinidad and Tobago. The boys from the BTC, however, came home with the most disciplined team award. And that's your update from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Department of Health and Wellness wishes to inform the public that the urgent care unit at the Denry Hospital will be closed during the period Monday, August 26 to Thursday, September 5, 2019 to undergo mold treatment. Therefore, all persons with emergencies are kindly asked to visit the St. Jude Hospital and the Victoria Hospital for management of cases. Primary care services at Denry Hospital will continue as routine. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Yonan se mania pou kontrole maladie si gato kanwe se pou spray epikemik. 
il n'est pas bon pour spread de la la pluie et ben si tu as ma oui et qui a gardé à quoi dit la pluie peut tomber en 3 pour 4 mètres de temps parce que la pluie qui a lavé l'huile spray a. aussi il plie mais pour spread de la journée le, la panne est trop vent chalet et ben le, il n'est pas trop mouillé le soleil la trop chaud il ka fait ses feuilles figla et ben banane la plié et qui ka difficile pour ses feuilles la bien ou si vrai traitement qui en lait et ben en bas feuilles la. Bon nez le matin et ben talé après-midi plus mer pour spray parce que temps plus frais et ses feuilles la ka ouvert. Changez, le ou ka spray toujours mettez plus attention à sous ces jeunes feuilles la. Pas spray ses plants trop et faire si oui ou spray toute plantation en yon sel kou. Plan qui manche spray ça affecte les autres ces plans bien à l'aise. Pour plus d'informations à ce manière pour traiter et contrôler maladie si vous avez un à ce plantation et bien jardin, vous pouvez téléphoner au département pour ménager si vous avez un noir à numéro 451-549 et bien 451-5894 et bien email à bpmu.candw.lc. Commission Salak a sorti Hod Ministère de l'Agriculture, Ensemble et Fonds, Coopération internationale et développement, Hod Pays, République la Chine, Taiwan. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Merci autant, Nisha. Monsieur, Madame, département qui est responsable pour l'information, un gouvernement, c'est le CGIS. À ce moment Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, car vous êtes au Nouvelle Acquéole. Vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Premier ministre de l'ICI, Honorable Alain Chastney, déclare que, ici tellement, nous avons complètement que le cyclone Dorian Goissier, c'est l'ICI. Premier ministre Chastney, il va y avoir un cyclone qui, quand il y a un gouvernement, il est toujours préparé pour la saison de mauvais temps en pays, malgré le temps qui attaque n'importe quel, disons, en saison en saison cyclone. En commençant à suivre le département de GIS et NTN, le Premier ministre Chastney a remarqué que le cyclone-là a développé plus de force de la taille qui était babad pour cette ci et qu'il y a une qualité de l'eau qui est mauvaise à la portée en Martinique. Alors, il dit qu'il est très content pour l'équipe qui a trouvé, pas trouvé affecté. On a Premier ministre a renforcé l'importance pour toujours préparer de la taille des as et pour faire des ressources avalables à l'air pour le public. Là, et les agences qui n'ont pas responsabilité pour adresser la situation après un mauvais temps. Le Premier ministre Chasse dit que tout le monde a le gouvernement et le qui a préparé pour la saison de mauvais temps. Il a examiné pour assurer le système de communication qui partait en service pour plus de l'année pour faire assurer que tout a fait en ordre. Il a ajouté que le téléphone satellite aussi, c'est le site de le Premier ministre l'a annoncé. Le Premier ministre Chasse parlé du service de police et de préparation. Il était en ordre. On a premier ministre là avoué que si Claude Dorian te posé une liste aussi au gouvernement, il déclarait que après pays a été trouvé directif pour fermer toute opération. Il a découvert que la tenue moun qui était bord de la place qu'a suivi couché qu'a dormi. Premier ministre là dit que gouvernement a accueilli à son ministre des Affaires égalité la police numéro et conseil de ville qu'a suivi pour adresser cette situation ça là immédiatement. Parce que sa partie est supposée si faire pièce de bonnement. Le Premier ministre a annoncé que l'année établissement a construit qui l'a principalement pour une situation comme ça. Et qui a tenu pièce de rapport qui a été plein. Et aussi, le gouvernement a déposé un gros quantité d'argent en établissement Cornerstone, côté de ce monde qui est en la rue, qui a trouvé le logement. En façon de communication, le Premier ministre Chasse a complimenté GIS et NTN, qui était un établissement NIMO, pour fournir le public la et puis l'information. Il aussi complémenté l'autre établissement de la PIA pour rester en opération de votre PIA qui a préparé pour le cyclone Dorian. À 10 h matin, mardi, le 27 août, nous avons déclaré que la PIA a viré en opération comme doit être parce que le cyclone Dorian n'a pas en menace encore pour cette ci En parlant de ça, deuxième grand chef à département les pompiers, c'est ici. George Victorin déclare que, en tant que désastre, il est nécessaire pour l'animer le système de communication et le renforcement de la loi. 
Guan Guec, les paupières dit ça au résultat du passage cyclone Dorian. Selon Victim, pendant le travail qu'a fait à direction ça là, les officiers ni pour travail, plus mais et plus près et puis même public, au fait assurer que tout le monde s'est trouvé plus protection du bon temps comme ça. Victim dit que pendant la majorité du monde était point ces conseils là, sérieux, la tenue aussi en l'eau les personnes qui étaient assis là oui bon nez m'a dit bon matin. Chauffeur l'auto avec les individus qui étaient sur la rue, tout en ces villes, villages et communes pays. Grand chef officier copia, verti qui sa partie aux action qui était mérité en pièce façon. Comme opération nationale pour pays a été fermée toujours. Victime verti qui sa série te yon wis qui partie nécessaire pièce de bonnement. Il aussi déclaré qui la partie ni pièce ou rapport sérieux au résultat de Dorian. Il parlait dit il y a un mauvais défi en vieux fort, mais ça appartient à une pièce de connexion directe et puis cyclone Dorian. Il dit tout a fait et passé doucement et l'opération ambulance était normale. Le gouvernement a déclaré satisfaction et puis agrément qui est signé, il est à haut et puis la fédération, les syndicats en cette ci en haussement salaire pour le travail du gouvernement. Le chef de la négociation pour le gouvernement, Philippe Dalso, a vu que malgré la négociation, après un bon de trois temps, mais quand même, il était nécessaire. Selon Dalso, cette négociation a mérité en pile patience, bonne comprendre et coopération parmi tous les deux partisans. Six syndicats des secteurs publics signés pour des arguments. Yon, c'était pour le 1er avril 2016, pour le 31 mars 2019, et l'autre là, c'était pour le 1er avril 2019, pour le 31 mars 2010. Parmi ces bénéfices arguments, ça là, c'est haussement salaire par 2% pour 2016 pour 2019 et 4% pour 2019 pour 2022. Mais c'est dans le sens où il aussi, ça c'est un grand accomplissement pour le gouvernement et c'est espoir que la situation ça là, continue dans une bonne direction. Selon dans le sens, ça fait possible pour le gouvernement de planer plus mais à temps pour venir et pour aussi faciliter pour les travailleurs ou ces vrais bénéfices à l'air. Le président de la Fédération a déclaré déclaré que la négociation était ouverte, mais il satisfait. Il déclare que malgré que la négociation était pour moins difficile, mais c'est même là satisfait et puis finissement la négociation. Il y a aussi un officier des affaires de travail, un département de travail, puis il a déclaré que le département a très plein et puis fait son négociation passée et qu'à présent, tous les partisans ça continue à la route. Et c'est comme ça que nous retrouvons votre nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je ne peux pas me considérer. Quand vous avez la vie, vous avez posé toute l'autre nouvelle à Koyol. Et nous vous remercions de l'équipe. Tout le monde est passé sans les sommes. Nous vous avons préparé pour le cyclone Dorian. À présent, je vous remercie pour vous présenter. Nisha. Merci, Opel Primus. Et ici, nous voyons ce qui se passe à nous, weather-wise. Partly cloudy to cloudy skies with scattered showers and a few thunderstorms over the leeward windward islands. Elsewhere, fair to cloudy at times with a few showers. Moisture and instability left in the wake of tropical storm Dorian will continue to generate cloudiness, showers and possibly thunderstorms over northern portions of the eastern Caribbean islands during the next 24 hours. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. Saharan dry air prevails in the wave's environment at this time. Tides for Castries Harbor, high at 2.50 p.m., low at 7.31 p.m. Tides for Viewford Bay, high at 3.57 p.m., low at 8.58 p.m. Seas, slight to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Thursday at 5.52 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.